Oh, hello there! There are a lot of Shrek games out there. More than you would think there are. Frankly, it's ironic that the movie that was basically a giant F.U. to Disney's habits of marketing the crap out of its films would end up doing exactly the same thing. However, instead of a barrage of subpar sequels and live-action remakes, we got a veritable swap of subpar video games. As such, there are still many Shrek games to discuss. I've already talked about seven different Shrek games in the past, but I assure you, there are far more layers to this onion than you think. The one realm of Shrek games I've neglected to talk about before is the handheld titles. With that said, I'm Aaron the Wolf, and this is the disgusting world of portable Shrek games. Let's start with not only the first portable Shrek game, but also the first Shrek game ever, releasing six months before Shrek's box. That game is called Shrek Fairy Tale Freakdown for the Game Boy Color. So yeah, this is Shrek's first game, everybody. Doesn't it just look so clean? Also, what exactly is a fairy tale freakdown? Is it supposed to be a pun on breakdown? If that's the case, this will only end up like Shrek at a birthday party. So, in case it wasn't obvious, Fairy Tale Freakdown is a fighting game. I think. You could choose different characters from the movie, with some unlockable as you beat the main arcade mode. Oh god, Shrek, what happened to you? They took my fucking eyes. Anyway, how does one play Fairy Tale Freakdown? Honestly, you tell me. This game feels like all those crappy Game Boy ports of other fighting games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Except where those games at least had the same moves from the arcade versions, this game has virtually no special commands. You just mash the B button to drop kick your opponents in the face over and over again until they decide to give up. Sure, you can unlock special abilities as you progress through the arcade mode, but I never used them since Drex Dropkick were- Drex Dropkick? <laughs> <laughs> but I never used them since Shrek's dropkick works 99% of the time. Oh yeah, and also, uh, this is a Game Boy Color we're talking about, with only two buttons, so there's not a lot to work with there. I will mention, this game has that habit of fighting game characters just moon jumping everywhere, in an age that mostly got rid of it. Also, might I mention, you can accidentally jump into bottomless pits and ring yourself out. I'm not even kidding, I was legitimately confused the first few times this happened. The environments all blend together, so I had no idea there was even a pit there at all. As you progress through arcade mode, you'll encounter other characters like the Big Bad Wolf, Gingerbread Man on Kenny Kane's stilts, a mirror image of yourself, and even the dragon herself. Everyone who said before that Ridley was too big for Smash is a moron because Shrek Fairy Tail freaked down at it 17 years earlier. Also, the final boss is Lord Farquaad, which, yeah, the idea of this short supply that is Farquaad overpowering this Giga Chat of an ogre is funnier than Jack Horner being upstaged by Pinocchio at the Oscars. But honestly, what else can I really say about this game? It has about as much depth as a 13-year-old's essay on Moby's dick. But if you want to talk about portable Shrek games, no other handheld has more Shrek games on it than the Game Boy Advance. Now, I'm not interested in the GBA versions of console games like Shrek 2 on the GameCube. I'd like to cover the games made exclusively for the GBA, starting with Shrek Swamp Kart Speedway in 2002. Yeah, every big franchise at one point had a Mario Kart clone back then, so this makes sense. <laughs> Oh god, why do you look like that, Shrek? Let me tell you, if you had a face like that when scaring off villagers, no one would ever come near your swamp again. Also, is that freaking Comic Sans? I guess it's just gonna be one of those days. Right off the bat, I must say that this game's sound design is atrocious. It somehow makes Fairy Tail Freakdown sound like Hi-Fi Rush by comparison. Just listen to this music. And if you think it's bad there, just wait till you hear what the actual game sounds like. If Shrek Carnival Craze Party Games was torture for my arms, Shrek Swamp Cart Speedway is torture for my eyes and ears. This is the kind of thing that Shrek the Third fans like to listen to at night. Once you get past that, the game is just Mario Kart Super Circuit 
but just way worse. I mean, Super Circuit is already kind of a meh game to begin with, but at least the sound design is nice and easy on the ears. Swamp Kart Speedway is just a sensory overload in every way possible, especially with some of the later stages. No joke, I legitimately felt sick and wanted to vomit playing this game. Imagine you took the trippiest special stage from Sonic CD, put it on the GBA with far worse graphics, and played any annoying video game sound effect you can think of, you'd get Swamp Kart Speedway. So yeah, put all that together and you got yourself a bad time playing this game. Next! Next we have Shrek Hassle at the Castle for the GBA. This title screen music is just giving me weird vibes. I don't know why, but it's just making me uncomfortable. Oh, 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 oh boy! Here comes the freaky giant heads from Shrek Super Party again! Yay! More nightmare fuel! Jeez, as if Funko Pops couldn't get any freakier. But aside from the weird music, this game is actually pretty alright. It plays decently, the sound design is easy on the ears, and overall, it's an okay time. I mean, it's not great, and there's no reason to play this nowadays, but it's alright. In this game, you can beat the hell out of Duloc guards, you have a super meter that you can use to scare off everyone on screen, and there are specific escort missions where you help one of the pigs of Red Riding Hood get to the end, and you can even play as Donkey. Other than that, however, the game is still not that great. I got to this one level where you have to chase and catch the Farquad mascot, where I started to see how stiff the jumping is. It reminds me a lot of Shrek 2 on the GameCube. It feels way too heavy. I know he's an ogre, but that's not the point. And if you don't jump at the very last moment, you're not making it. This results in a bunch of screwing around causing the clock to run out. Oh yeah, there's a time limit in this game. Why? For what reason? Why put a time limit in the game if there's no reason for it? And so, I can never catch the mascot no matter how much I tried. There's really not much to this one. As I said before, Shrek 2 was released on both consoles and handhelds, but there was actually another version of Shrek 2 Game Boy Advance released exclusively for the handheld, Shrek 2 Beg for Mercy, starring Puss in Boots. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick my language real quick. Oh. Uh So, yeah, the ROM I got for this game was from another country, and I didn't realize that before I started playing. Am I going to find the right version of this game? No, because this is funnier. I'll just pick Spanish, I don't care. Barring the language barrier for a moment, this game starts by telling us about Puss in Boots before the movie's events, before the actual Puss in Boots prequel. As for the game itself, it's a game where Puss in Boots has no face, runs around while jumping and meowing all the time, collecting coins, and fighting off villagers who also have no face and flying mutant pumpkins. This honestly doesn't feel like a Shrek game at all due to the fog, spooky atmosphere, and creepy trees with the eyes in the background. Why did they stop there? Why not add zombies, ghosts, wicked witches, and skeletons? They should have just called it Boo! Haunted House! Anyway, Puss meets up with the king to take the offer to kill Shrek, and as for Shrek himself, Yep, I don't blame King Harold at all with that face. Also, wait, we're playing a Shrek now? I thought this was a Puss in Boots game, and we're back in the same stock spooky areas from before? Ugh, this is worse than Puss's hairball vomit. Also, when Shrek dies, he just sits down and just thinks about what went wrong in his life. Yeah, overall, this game is pretty bland and forgettable. Guess I'll just put Shrek out of his misery. Shrek is lost, Shrek is dead. More at 11. But before Shrek died, he was wreaking havoc in Shrek, wreaking havoc on the real boy advance. You know, I'm really starting to get sick of all these Shrek games, but let's press on. Shrek Wreakin' Havoc is loosely based on the plot of Shrek 4D, The Ghost of Farquaad, and as it turns out, we get to play as Fiona this time. But wait a minute, Fiona's still a human here. Didn't the curse break at the end of the first movie? and her turning into an ogre is just never addressed in this? What kind of fucked up alternate universe shit is this? Fiona doesn't seem too happy about it either, so she decides to beat up anyone who crosses her path. Just look at her face, she's pissed as hell. She even takes out her frustrations on Pinocchio, which somehow turns him into a real 
boy, what? At this point, trying to question anything about these games is worthless. Anything goes in Shrek licensed games. Now we're in the woods, and this is where I realized that this is one of those games that make you say, where the hell do I go? I'm not even kidding, man. I walked around for half an hour trying to find my way out of this place to no avail. Every part of this forest looks the same, so I don't know where anything is. I honestly stopped caring by this point. So I just did the sensible thing and put Fiona out of this torturous hell. <laughs> Let's take a break from portable Shrek games to look at some console Shrek games I neglected to look at in the past, like Shrek Forever After on the Wii. And considering that Shrek Carnival Craze Party Games was an absolute disaster, it can only get so much better from here, right? Well, yeah, but not by much. Shrek Forever After on Wii opens up with the exact same opening narration from the film, which quickly transitions to Rumpelstiltskin summarizing more plot by playing with his... statues? Roar! I'm Shrek, and I wanted my old ogre life back so bad that I actually traded it for the day I was born. Lord help me! What? You need it on the breach, sir. Knock on my door! Knock next time! Yes, sir. Did you see anything? No, sir. I didn't see you playing with your dolls again. Good! Also, can I just say that I am legitimately sick of hearing this fake-ass Mike Myers impersonator in every Shrek game? Ah, feels good to be the real me again. He always sounds like he's about to sneeze and I hate it. So what is the actual gameplay like? Well, it's a top-down RPG where you switch between four different characters that all do one unique thing and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is one of the dullest and most forgettable games I've ever played. Frankly, the only thing worth talking about it is that since the game is on the Wii, the pointer cursor is a red sniper dot. Because I guess Shrek wants to die that badly. Man, I don't even know why I'm still playing this. Hang on. The magic mirror can transport Shrek back to his original timeline? Smell that? Yes, it's the swampy home you left behind, Shrek. What? You're telling me that the magic mirror could have sent Shrek back to his original timeline the whole time? Where was this mirror when Shrek needed him in the movie? Is this just some sort of illusion? Did Doctor Strange take his family and install them in a New York sanctum? This makes no sense! I rest my case. Anything goes in these games. So I think I'm just gonna quit before I have an aneurysm. Pussy Boots on the Wii! That that's it. That that's the transition. Just 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 go. Just 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 cut just cut right to the game. The game starts with a pretty cool animated intro that recaps the movie's beginning, complete with the great value version of Antonio Banderas. The men gave up what they knew that the bandits Jack and Jill had somehow found the magic beans. And as for the game itself, I mean, I think it speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's another Wii game that uses the motion controls as a gimmick. You just waggle the Wiimote to take out all the enemies on the screen. There's no real strategy involved. You can kick the enemies into barrels and other precarious objects, but that's it. And suddenly, without transition, we're performing a song for the Senorita. And with these motion controls, I'm sure it'll be the best love song since every breath you take. I call this one, La Convulsion del Gato. Moving on, so why does the game play like this? Well, it turns out that this is also an Xbox Kinect game and a PlayStation Move supported game. So yeah, the game from the ground up is designed to be played by swinging your hands around. And honestly, that says everything I need to about the game. It's a motion-based gimmick game. I guess they can't all be as innovative as The Last Wish. Now, there are Shrek mobile games that came out on iPhone a few years back, like Shrek Alarm and Pocket Shrek, but unfortunately, there is absolutely no way to play these games nowadays, which is a massive shame. That said, I did want to talk about the most obscure Shrek game I could get my hands on, 
Shrek 2 Ogre Bowler on PC. This game is a Shrek spin-off of Polar Bowler released for Shrek 2 in 2004. I had never heard of Polar Bowler before making this, but it seemed like such an anomaly that I had to check it out, and that itself was quite an experience. The first thing that came up when I searched for the game was its store page on Wild Tangent Games. It also apparently cost $9.99 to play it. Now you may think, you're not gonna pay 10 bucks for a stupid Shrek bowling game, right? Honey, I paid 30 bucks for Shrek Carnival Craze party games. I don't exactly have integrity with this kind of stuff. However, I had to create an account for the website to purchase the game. My first name is... Shrek. Last name is love. And just like that, I have my own desktop shortcut for the game. Finally, I can place this game right next to my other favorite family-friendly PC game, Doom 93. But one must wonder, was buying the game legally for $10, signing up for an obscure game service, and just generally caring about putting this game in the video worth it? Did it mean anything? No! You dance irritating miniature beast of burden! To start with, anytime I tried to put the game in full screen, it broke my capture software. So, we gotta play it like this. And once I finally played it, it it's just bowling. Except it has some of the worst controls I've ever seen for a PC game. You can move the ball after you launch it from the slingshot, except the controls are so goddamn slippery that it's impossible to keep the ball's path straight. I will personally ship to you all of the onions in the world if you could tell me how to control this game properly and get a strike in every round. But it's not fucking happening. How did they release so many garbage games for this franchise? Every single game I played in this video has been mediocre at best to agonizing at worst. I don't even know how long I can stomach these games, so I'll just call it here. Until then, my name is Aaron the Wolf, and I hope that you- <laughs> Oh no, Aaron. You are far from done, my friend. Wally? No. We're not doing this bit again. Besides, there can't possibly be any more Shrek games to talk about. Aw, oh, you can't keep hiding away from it, Aaron. You and I both know there's still one more game you've yet to look at. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, so that's how we're going to play it then, hmm? <laughs> Fine. No. No! 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 Shrek, Ogres, and Dronkies on the DS. Let's just get this over with. So we got this incredibly hideous low poly opening where Shrek and Fiona get a message through a jack in the box. At this point, I'm done questioning it. What the? Uh, just talk, you know what? Right? Okay, here it goes. Hello? Hi! It's me, Pinocchio! Oh, actually, this is Tom from Mushroom Kingdom! Oh, yeah! <laughs> <coughs> well. At least I went for it. So Shrek and Fiona must go back to far, far away for an important royal tour or something like that. That means we have to watch the kids while they're gone. Yes, Ogres and Dronkies is a babysitting simulator where we care for baby ogres and these abominations. All it needs is a green diamond above everyone's head and we'd be in a Shrek version of The Sims. The shrimps. In this game, you put toys on the floor for the kids to pick up and play with, and and, and you can play mini games, and you can play play outside, and it it's it it, 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 it it's awful. It's so fucking awful! It's all over and over, and every single one of them sucks. I have dealt with my fair share of awful Shrek games in the past. Shrek Treasure Hunt, Super Party, Carnival Craze Party Games, Fairy Tale Freakdown, Swamp Cart Speedway, Ogre Bowler, but this? This is officially the last straw. Somebody needs to pay!
I'm sick of your shit! Oh, you're really gonna get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eat this, Shrek! You like jazz? How are there so many bad Shrek games? You were the chosen one, Shrek! It was said that you would mock Disney, not become them! Mock them for overmarketing their properties! Not do the same yourself! Dude, I just want a good Shrek game for once. Is that too much to ask? <sighs> Whatever. I guess we might as well look at this stupid game real quick. Shrek Super Slam, a Smash Bros. clone. I mean, I've already hit rock bottom with these games, so how much worse could it get? <laughs> Let's find out. Alright, Shrek Super Slam. Wait a minute. It's still a Smash Brothers clone, but the controls are tight and responsive. The mechanics make for some engaging fights. The story mode has a bunch of unique stories that lead to fights. The dialogue is entertaining. The stages themselves are interactable with tons of breakable set pieces, some items are actually fun to use, and overall, it's a fun time? It's... It's a good game! I can't believe my eyes! The Shrek game, it's actually good! I mean, it's nothing amazing, but it's the best Shrek game I've ever played in my life! It's a miracle! There is a god, and this is the proof! A good Shrek game! I'm... I'm speechless! I mean, I don't even know what to say! It's good! It's good! They didn't fuck it up! Until then, everyone, my name is Aaron the Wolf, and let's all give a massive thank you to our Lord and Savior, Shrek. Stay strong, and live life.